Hey guys, what is going on? Welcome back to the sixth episode of the Glide tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at the save state and actually start saving information that uh, we're going to be using in the game. So right now, all we have, if we open up the save state really quickly, we have the gold. Now, obviously, we don't want to be giving out 133 gold at the beginning. Let's just put that on zero. And um, in the other things we're going to be saving today is three different other ints, actually. First one being the color own. And let's actually keep writing down those ints before I start explaining how we're going to be using it. So we have the color own, the trail own, and also the completed levels, public int, completed level. So um, let me quickly explain that. I'll actually put them in orders of what is the easiest to understand. At first, we have the goal. That is a simple int, really easy to just uh, manipulate. And that's the amount of goal you have, basically. Second, we have the completed level. So in our game, the levels are going to be completed in order. So if you completed level two, you can access level three. You can't access level four, you can access level five. You can only access level three if uh, you complete level two. So this int is simply going to go up and up and that's gonna be used for uh, completion of the game, basically. So it's just a, sim a simple int we're gonna be using like that. Now, this is where it gets complicated because we have 10 different colors and also we have 10 different trails. Now, to some extent, a complete beginner might actually want to put 10 different booleans, a private boolean, uh, color owned one, color owned two, color three. That's just, that would be crazy. We don't, we don't do that here. Uh, instead, we're going to store all the information of the 10 colors we can own into a single int, and we're going to be using bit operation to do that. So basically, what we have here is we have an int 32. So um, in 32 looks like this in memory, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, that's 8, 16, and then 32. So int 32 looks like this in memory. Uh, this is binary, so obviously if you want to say something like, okay, so um, this number is going to be equal to 4, you're going to have to go like this, 1, 2, and then 4. So uh, I'm not going to explain exactly how to write down binary number, but what we're going to be doing is actually using these right here, uh, to know if we have the color or not. So assuming that you have the first color, we're going to turn on this very first number because you read that from the right to the left. Uh, we're going to turn it on just by simply putting a one here. Now, if you unlock the fourth color after that, we're going to go here and actually toggle this one on. And if you go back here and you unlock the second one, simply play around with the number like that until we have all the colors we need. So this is how we're going to be actually saving our data. So we're going to be playing with the bit directly. And that is something that uh, you're going to see is a little bit complicated to understand at first. But once you master it, you can actually use it at a bunch of places and save a lot of memory. Like you could actually have an int 64 and uh, save plenty of memory on a really big amount of data. Anyway, so once we have this out of the way, we now have our new save state. It looks like this again fairly simple save state and uh, we don't even have to do anything else to the code we've put in the last episode since it's going to be taken care of automatically by the XML serializer. So next step is to go back inside of the save manager and like I said we're not going to be playing with the code we've already wrote. We're going to be declaring some new function right here. So the first function we're going to be using is called is color own and it's to check if the color was actually brought before or I don't know how to write this word. So if the if the color is owned, let's just write that down. Um, and it is a public Boolean. So we return a Boolean, true or false, is color own with the index we're checking. So to do this, we need to actually check at the very, um, at the very precise bit we're looking for. So if you guys remember, we have all these zeros. And if I say, well, is the, um, the color three own, I have to go over here, do one, two, three. And is that bit set? If it's on zero, we return false. If it's on one, we return through. The way we do this is by using bit operators. So let's do a check if the bit is set. If so, the color is own. And the way we go about this is by writing it down this way. So we're simply going to uh, wrap it up in a return statement since it returns us a boolean. So if state that color own, which is um, the single int that actually contains all the data about which color we own or not, and then you do a ampersand, one, you shift towards the left, 
and it looks like this. As if that's not equal to zero, that means um, it is actually own. And this is actually how you check for a single um, bit in your number. Now the bit is right here. If you had number one in here, we check the second uh, zero. If you had number zero, we check the first, and so on. We're going to copy over this and just paste it. Check if the trail is own. And we're going to do the same exact thing for the trail. Now state dot trail own, and we have our two function right here that checks whether or not the bit is set. Now to actually set those bit, we are going to create two new function again. So let's do a unlock a color in the color own. Oh, what am I writing right here? <laughs> unlock a color in the color own int that we can find in the save state. And we're going to call this function public void unlock color. So again, fairly simple to use, we're going to be sending an int and whatever int is in there is going to be unlocking um, the state dot color own. So what we do right here is another, uh, we're going to be using another bit operator, this one actually looks like this. So toggle on the bit at index, and then we do state color own and that's the operator right here. So that's the pipe sign, and then the equal. And then we do one shift towards index. And this is the operator to actually toggle on a bit. So this operator right here, pipe equal is going to toggle on a bit. Now we're never going to be toggling it off. But in case you're curious, if you want to toggle off a bit, you do it that way. If I can find the proper key on my keyboard, okay, I have the wrong language. Let me just pull the alt code table right here. And here it is. So that's alt 94. So this operator right here is going to toggle off a bit. Now in our case, we want to toggle on. So let's do the pipe sign. And you probably guessed it already, but we're going to be duplicating that. And we're going to unlock a trail in the trail own int. Change the name for unlock trail and state that trail own is now equal, or actually is pipe equal to one we shift towards index. Now for the purpose of making our life easier later on, we're going to create a function that we won't use just yet, but let's create a function that resets everything. So resets the whole save file. And like I said, we're not going to be using it just yet. We just want to have it there in case we're testing out. So let's do a reset save right here, public void reset save. And all we have to do is player pref dot delete key. And we're deleting the key save. All right, so that's pretty much all we needed today in this episode. Let's quickly just head back in the awake so I can actually show you if it works or not uh, using some simple calls. So we're going to do debug.log and then we're going to say is color own. And let's go with the index, a random one. Let's go with index four. So technically it should not be own. And then what we're going to be doing is unlock the color at the index four and see if it is own on the second call. So let's go ahead and just start the game really quickly, see if it actually works. Go under the preloader and then let's press on play. So it was false at first, then we unlocked it and it was through now. And that's pretty much it. We could actually show as well the number so you guys might understand a little bit better what's going on. Uh, what we're going to be doing right here is we're not going to be showing the, uh, the actual boolean. We're going to say state dot color own, which is going to give us the int. So Let's have a look right here if we do something like, and like I said, it's not something you need to do. I just want to do it um, so you guys might understand a little bit better what's going on here. I'll actually create a bunch of those calls so you can see what happens. So right now we're going to be looking at the first number. First number uh, at the beginning is zero. So let's actually use 16 bit right here. So at the beginning, we get the number zero. And then once we unlock the first um, bit, it's going to look something like this, right? And that is going to equal one. Now, if we move on to this one, now at this point, we already have this one toggled, but what we're doing right here, unlock color one is actually going to this index and toggling it on again. So at this point, we have a number that says three. And if we just keep on going like this, you're going to tell that um, all we do is just simply turn them one by one at the time. So this one would be so we've got one, two, we got seven here. If you don't know how to read binary, it's not a big deal. And uh, I'll just use these for an example. So let's have a look in the game, what kind of results we get. So do we really get one, three, seven, 15 and 31? As you can tell, we did. 
Um, now, if you want to go with a weird order, so let's go and just do something like, uh, let's do four and then one. So if we do four and one, it's going to be like one, two, three, four, and then you use the other one since we're uh, zero base on that index. And what is that number right here? It is, it is 16. And then we unlock one that is going to give us 17. So this number right here would be 17. Uh, let me just put them in the proper order. So at the beginning, we unlock the fourth, the fourth bit, which is the fifth one in reality. Uh, we get number 16, and then we do, uh, we unlock the first one. So this number is now 17. Back in the game, let's see if we get 16 and 17. Oh, we actually get 18. So my bad, I was a miscalculation on my part, but um, that is because this bit is not toggled on, it is this one, since we're zero base. If we wanted to have a 17, we'd be doing unlock color zero. So I hope you guys understand a little bit better what's going on right here and uh, how we're gonna be using these bit as a good way to save a lot of memory and also as an easy way to just compact all our data. As always, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something. Again, this is something you can bring on to any other game as you want. Uh, the whole saving system is really portable. So if you want to just put it in other games, have fun doing that. Other than this, please leave a like on the video. That would be really, really cool. Share it with your friends so we can all make games. And you should be clicking on that video on the screen right now to move on to the next tutorial in which we do. What exactly is it that we do? We do. Let me just. Uh, oh. We play with the cost. Okay, we're going to be creating an array of costs. That's what's written down on my page right here. Anyway, guys, I will see you in the next one.